Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CAC English. About me, I am Sandeep Bhushan Thumala and my credentials are I have 10 years of teaching experience for civil services. I teach international relations, internal security and in-depth analysis of the trending editorials and articles which will be very very useful for prelims and mains. And uh, my tagline is that I would emphasize on the keywords and the key phrases from the editorials and articles which will be very very useful for identifying the factual and also the analytical questions for the prelims as well as mains examination. So definitely my tagline that is keywords analyzing the keywords and the key phrases for identifying analyzing the keywords and key phrases for identifying the factual and analytical questions which will be very very useful for prelims and in regards to the imbibing the keywords and the key phrases imbibing the keywords in the key phrases in the answer writing so that will make sure that you will have an edge over others in regards to having making sure that your answer is very apt to the mains examination so definitely it will be useful for the prelims as well as mains and focusing on both the 2020 and then 2021 prelims and mains examinations and prior to that, you have a notification in regards to Let's Crack UPSC CS English, which is India's largest learning platform. Once you get subscribed to it, you will have unlimited live and recorded courses from the best educators from India. And the privileges you get once you subscribe are the daily live classes, live testing quizzes, structured courses, and unlimited access in regards to your live and recorded courses. And these are the educators at an academy which you can see it on your screen and in regards to let's crack UPSC CS English the courses offered are economy history current affairs and all other courses which you can see it on your screen along with that you have essay writing Indian society social issues and all the courses which you can also see it on your screen and in regards to let's crack UPSC CS English subscription you have 12 month subscription 24 month subscription 12 month subscription the original price is 40,000 and 24 month subscription the original price is 48,000. So it's always recommended to go ahead with 24 months. Let's crack UPSC CAC English subscription using my code SVT10 that is Sandeep Bush and Tumala10 wherein the original price is 48,000. And while you use my code SVT10, you will get 10% off of the 48,000 original amount and the discounted price would be 43,200. So it's always recommended that you as a civil servant aspirant go ahead with subscribing for 24 months because you have a privilege here by the unacademy to all the civil servant aspirants that you would be paying the amount only for the 13 months but you will get the entire 24 month subscription so do take the advantage which has been offered by an academy to all the civil servant aspirants that you will be paying only 13 months that is 12 months the original price is for 40,000 and one month the original price is 8,000 so 13 months together, 4 plus 40,000 plus 8,000 is 48,000. But you will be paying the only the 13 months, but you will get the entire 24 month subscription for the Let's Crack UPSC CS English. And do not forget to use my code SBT10, that is Sandeep Bhushan Tumala10. And take the maximum benefit of the an academy giving privilege or opportunity to all the civil servant aspirants. And this session is in regards to the in depth analysis of the trending editorials and articles which I will be focusing in regards to the in-depth that is thorough and better understanding of the topic which will be useful for you in regards to prelims as well as mains examination wherein my focus would be in regards to analyzing the keywords and the key phrases so as my tagline goes on in regards to keywords and the key phrases so this is Sandeep Bhushan tagline that you would or I will make sure that you will be in a position to identify the keywords and the key phrases throughout entire your preparation that is while you are reading the newspaper news items or in regards to the editorials and articles important is the keywords and the key phrases so before i get into the topic i would say a very good morning to all the viewers that is the civil servant aspirants who are in uh, watching my video that is it could be live or live chat so Hemant, Srihari, Madhu, Satya, Anand, Siddharth and Hem, Asit, Kumbar has also joined very good morning to you Asit I think you are today is the first class Asit 
are you giving an attempt in 2020 or for the later on please let me know so that accordingly i will go ahead with the 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 uh, the depth of the class or i'll make sure that there is little bit of uh, speed has to be decreased i'll make sure with that the so asit very good morning please let me know whether you are giving an attempt in the year 2020 or for the later on and then before i get into the topic that is today's article which talks about the dimming of chinese strongman aura so what do you mean by dimming dimming is a kind of what you said darkness darkness of chinese strongman aura aura is a sense you can take it as a characteristics characteristic of the strongman's is it dimming is a big question mark so we will look at whether it is dimming that is the darkness or else the charm of the chinese strongman characteristics or the presence or the leadership is it dimming we will look at it and uh, asit kumar has said preparing for 2021 so definitely all the best to you asit and then my lessons or my lecture my uh, better and thorough explanation in depth analysis will definitely help you in regards to the prelims as well as mains examinations as well as mains examination so we will look at what is uh, the the challenge which is actually to the xi jinping so we will look at the what are the challenges to the xi jinping leadership whether the uh, strong man's uh, aura or the leadership is dimming or whether it is the same and whether he can take over the uh, the the kind of situation what china has actually faced right from mao and then zedong and then jiang <clears throat> uh, and then even yo jinto so we will look at all the premiers or the all the presidents the way they have gone ahead with their diplomacy and the way they gone ahead with the leadership skills and how the leadership skill we will differentiate with the ji jinping and how it is heading towards a whether it is dimming or whether it is a, or you whether we will look at whether there are any kind of disgruntled forces within china within uh, cpc so that there is a there is a chance that the strongman's aura would be dimming so we will look at all this definitely and then uh, uh, pratham is also joined very good morning to pratham good morning to pratham and good morning to asit also now i'll get into the topic and then Pratham said, good morning, good morning. So if you are fine, yes, I am fine and absolutely very well. And I hope you are also doing with all, everyone. And then we will definitely, while we follow this entire, we will look at the timeline of change. That is right from uh, Mao or even from what you said, we have looked at this article uh, earlier also. I have taken the diplomatic or the diplomacy or the diplomatic relations, what uh, Joy Enloy, when Mao and then Zedong, we have looked at how the uh, Jinping has taken up and then again we will look at focus on how the whether there is Xi Jinping's leadership is a challenge or is the aura of the strongman's leadership is definitely at a stage wherein it is a question mark or whether there is a disgruntled forces which are creating a challenge to the Xi Jinping we will look at and please make sure that you are following this or after this session also you also go ahead with the my earlier session where i have taken the diplomacy chinese diplomacy right from joy and loy i have taken one session right from joy and loy to z Jinping. i have taken this was what you say almost a fortnight ago i have i have gone with with the entire explanation so you can follow this along with that so we will also look at the timeline of change and then the spotlight on Z that is what Xi Jinping is going ahead and then whether there are any kind of troubled areas whether Xi Jinping is in the troubled waters we will look at so definitely it will be a very good uh, beneficial session for you all in regards to taking up the entire how the things have moved and then how Xi Jinping is taking up and how China is actually going ahead with the entire diplomatic and then in regards to economic and trade across the world how it is going at and then whether there is now any kind of trade deficit any kind of trade deficit and any kind of trust deficit so we will look at all this how it is impacting or how it will impact china's economy and then development of growth itself so we will look into it and we'll go further now and then uh, pratham says that But how can there be power pockets existing companies set up with all power centralized? Yes. 
definitely we will look at all those and that is what we will look at whether there is any kind of disgruntled within cpc disgruntled within cpc that there is a threat to the Xi Jinping's leadership so the dimming 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 of the chinese strongman's aura dimming in the sense reducing or lowering of the aura that is the leadership or the characteristics of the chinese strongman that is xi jinping so we will look at that prior to that we get to what xi jinping is uh, having the leadership skills and whether there is any reducing or lowering of the uh, characteristics or leadership of the xi jinping we will be prior to that we will look at the others also the great leaders i mean the the premiers of china we will look at so definitely if we if we look at uh, china seeks to project a picture that is you have a monolithic unity behind president xi jinping so definitely where we can try to identify that there is a unity behind xi jinping that is xi jinping is going ahead with the highly centralized leadership highly centralized leadership is the method or the uh, kind of strategy which xi jinping is going ahead that is the xi jinping's highly centralized leadership and that is definitely making sure that there is a monolithic unity behind xi jinping because of his strategy or because of his style that is highly centralized leadership highly centralized leadership and then according to the media that is the significance of the media is that it is pointing towards a greater scrutiny of his role and leadership so as he is going with a style of highly centralized leadership there is a point there is a significance which is rising in china that xi jinping is going ahead with a greater style or greater scrutiny is going ahead in regards to the xi jinping itself xi jinping so definitely the way he is going ahead with the style that is highly centralized leadership that is creating that is creating a significance that it would lead to a greater scrutiny of his role and leadership role and leadership style <clears throat> so definitely his style what we are talking about highly centralized leadership he is is creating a sense or a picture or creating a a, a, a a kind of situation that whether there is a greater scrutiny of his role and leadership style because especially after the covid-19 especially after the covid-19 pandemic break uh, outbreak in wuhan there is a greater scrutiny by the media troops that is a significance that whether there is a on his role and leadership style whether there is a scrutiny on that because the way he is going ahead with a highly centralized leadership and there are various other reports which have surfaced that the delays in reporting fact that is especially in regards to the covid-19 pandemic the way he has handled the situation there are reports there are various people are finding faults at xi jinping because of his highly centralized leadership that there were delays in reporting the facts of the covid-19 and conflicting instructions and tight censorship definitely he has gone ahead with because of his highly centralized leadership style there were delays in reporting the facts to the entire world or to the who and then in regards to the conflicting instructions so the instructions given by him as a centralized leadership are also conflicting and a very tight censorship on to the media also was very clear that he was going ahead with a highly centralized leadership and because of the covid-19 pandemic outbreak the greater scrutiny or is on to his role and leadership style and that is what is the major concern for xi jinping whether the leadership of xi jinping is dimming or reducing or lowering and there are many observers who draw parallels between mr xi and his predecessors that is his predecessors that is mao zedong and also deng xiaoping so definitely we have seen zhao enlai and then mao zedong and then in regards to the deng xiaoping also so definitely there are observers in china who are drawing parallels that means who are trying to figure out what has been done by zhao enlai and then mao zedong and then deng xiaoping so definitely if you look at if you are trying to have any parallels it is a very little unfairly between the both iconic city that is 
these three are iconic that is Zoy Enloy and then Moi Zedong and then in regards to even Deng Xiaoping also so definitely they are the iconic characteristics they are the iconic architects or iconic characteristics that they have come up with the, uh, the formation of Republic People's Republic of China they have come up with People's Republic of China so definitely if we are if there are any observers who are trying to have that drawing parallels between uh, Zoy Enloy and then even in regards to Moi Zedong and then in regards to Deng Xiaoping also that it looks very very little uh, less or unfairly because the three are the architects especially in regards to the Zedong and then Deng Xiaoping they are the architects or the iconic architects and the iconic characteristics of the People's Republic of China and this the one who is in the figure is, for your better understanding, is Mao Zedong. Mao Zedong is Mao Zedong. Uh, Pratham says that, but in the end, all the policy initiatives of Z are being implemented. There is no resistance in output. Yes, we will. We will definitely look at whether there is resistance. There is disgruntled within the CPC. Within, within the Communist Party, whether there is disgruntlement, we will look at it. Uh, Asit Kumbha says that, is there any institutional body who can scrutiny the Xi Jinping work? Yes, we will look at that also. Basically, CPC now is a party with many members, but power vested in a single. Yes, that is what highly centralized leadership. I have written here, highly centralized leadership. Very well made. With many members being uh, vested in a single person, probably monarch like setup of modern era. Yes, we will look at all that. We will look at how this slowly the communist will change. A timeline of change. We will look at the timeline of change right from 1949. 1949. We will look at the Moise Zedong. Is the founding member or the founding father, you can take it as to the PRC in 1949. And he has consolidated a long march. We have started, a, what do you say, in regards to the mid 1930s itself. Mid 1930s itself, he has gone ahead with a long agitation or he has brought people against the, uh, he consolidated himself and then he has come up with the or formation or he has founded the PRC in 1949. So that struggle has been taken up since mid of 1930s, mid of 1930s. And he has been an undisputed leader undisputed leader until his death that is September 9, 1946, 1976 excuse me sorry. So right from 1949 uh, founding the PRC till 1976 until his death he has been an undisputed leader. So definitely Mao Zedong is an undisputed leader and he has gone ahead with a long agitation. He has consolidated people right from mid 1930s and then he has formed PRC and he was an undisputed leader still till 1976. And it was a gang of four led by his wife, Jiang Qing. So definitely there was a, a, a consolidation of power and that was called as gang of four. Gang of four and that consolidation of power that is gang of four was led by his wife that is Jiang Qing. Which had usurped power in his name. So definitely uh, the, the, the wife has usurped power in his name after 1976. The Jiang Qing has taken the entire supremacy of the which was left which was the undisputed leader that is Mao Zedong later on it was his wife Jiang Qing has been uh, le leading the PRC and Mao has banished his advisories so definitely as we are looking at the undisputed leader because as I am saying that Mao was Mao Zedong was an undisputed leader definitely has made sure that Whoever were his adversaries, adversaries in the sense who are against, who are against Mao, he has banished and then he has made sure that he hasn't listened to anyone. For example, Liu Shakyu and then Liu Biao also or even Deng Xiaoping also he has, whoever were adversaries to him as an undisputed leader, he has banished everyone. That means he did try to suppress his adversaries. 
it could be Leo Shaoqi or Leo Bao or Leo Ariels in regards to Deng Xiaoping also. The next, what you say, the great, the architect of PRC, Mao Srin, uh, wherein he was the founding of the PRC has lasted for 27 years. So definitely for 27 years, Mao was the undisputed leader, undisputed leader for 27 years. By comparison, the 76 year Xi Jinping is just eight years at the helm of his affairs. So if you look at the Mao, he is 27 years, but if you look at Xi Jinping at the helm of affairs, at the helm of affairs, that is at the, as the undisputed leader, as the undisputed leader, Xi Jinping is just, what do you say, eight years. He has been just eight years. So if you are trying to draw parallels or if you are trying to draw parallel between Xi Jinping and then Mao Zedong, it doesn't really hold good because it would be unfairly because for 27 years, Mao Zedong has been an undisputed leader in China. But if you look at Xi Jinping at the helm of affairs in China, he is just for eight years, he is just for eight years. Okay, before I get to the next uh, slide, I want to go ahead with the comments uh, um, basically cpc is now the party with uh, many members but power vested in yes and probably a modern timeman <laughs> catalyst such a change to socialism okay you are expecting the kind of what you say a uh, revolution time square in 1989 and also later on you never know what will happen socialism from communism to socialism so as per uh, mm, uh, my previous uh, explanation also i have said that from communist to socialism to never know from to democracy to democracy from C to S to D from C to S to D you never know this kind of transformation might take place in PRC in PRC and now we look at Deng Xiaoping after the demise of Mao Zedong, Mao Zedong, we have seen Deng Xiaoping, the paramount leader who never held the post of either the head of the state or head of the government. So he was neither the head of the state or he was neither the head of the government. Please do understand. But he was a paramount leader. He was also as great as leader of Mao Zedong. So Deng Xiaoping has also been uh, at the helm of the affairs, but not holding any post in regards to the head of the state or head of the government but he has changed China's economic destiny but because of his leadership skills he has changed the China's economic destiny itself so his destiny was economic econ Chinese economy was totally changed because of his bold and far-sighted policies so he was a paramount leader with a bold and far-sighted with the bold and far-sighted policies he had and because of his bold and far-sighted policies he has gone ahead with changing the entire China's economic destiny even though he was not uh, been in the post of head of the state or head of the government ushering in the for modernization so definitely he has gone ahead with the economic the China's economic destiny has been changed by his bold and far-sighted policy shifts especially in the four especially in the four areas or sectors that is in regards to the agriculture in the industry in the defense and in regards to the science and technology so these are the four areas because of his bold and far-sighted policy he has gone ahead with changing the entire economy or economic destiny of china itself so definitely he is also a paramount leader after mao zedong and then he has gone ahead with a policy called as when we are talking about the far-sighted policy that is in regards to the open door policy. He has gone ahead with a new concept called as open door policy. Open door policy. And in this open door policy, right from what you say uh, late 1970s, he has, he has accepted the foreign direct investments. He has accepted the world's foreign direct investment and the trade was monstrous or it was used because of the FDIs, because of the entry of FDIs, that is through the open door policy. Please do understand, open door policy, it is very, very important in regards to the prelims. When we are talking about prelims in regards to the, uh, the Chinese economy, because the way the economy, Chinese economy or the trade is 
of flourishing or it is skyrocketing is because of the open door policy in the late 1970s taken up by the Deng Xiaoping that is because of his bold and far-sighted policy shifts wherein he has gone ahead with emphasizing on the four sectors that is modernizing of the agriculture modernizing of the industries modernizing of the defense and modernizing of the science and technology and that is because of the open door policy and through the open door policy he has made it very clear that he has opened up or he has uh, accepted the fdis he has accepted the fdis and that has created a lot of difference in regards to the investment and in regards to the trade and both this investment that is in regards to the foreign direct investment especially focusing on the trade the trade was a huge monstrous or it was behemoth that now the situation what the china is going ahead with the trade which is actually dominating the entire world is because of the open door policy taken up by the deng xiaoping because of his far sighted policy that is focusing on the open door policy please do understand this concept it is very very important and then deng xiaoping has also favored collegial form of decision making in consultation so please look at it so definitely he has gone ahead with the far sighted policy what that was in regards to the consultation so he hasn't taken any decision or else in regards to open door policy if we are talking about our discussion it was not in regards to the unilateral decision it was in regards to the consultation with the senior leaders and those senior leaders were called as eight elders please do understand again this is very very important for conceptual point in regards to the the, the way the system the open door policy has taken up in 1970s and then because of that fdis were invited into china and then the trade has become a, a, a monstrous or a huge because of the consultation taken up by deng xiaoping by his senior leaders called as parties eight leaders eight elders they are called as eight elders so this is again very important keyword eight elders and before i get into the next slide i would look at what pratham has said uh, india currently should follow uh, deng xiaoping open door policy to modernize agriculture industrial sector health and <laughs> okay <laughs> definitely if there is a possibility the government of india might focus on it but definitely we have a concept called as neighborhood first policy we have a concept called as neighborhood first policy probably we will go ahead with that also so open door policy is the one which is a very very important concept open door policy is a very very important concept or a keyword very you need to understand it wherein you can use it in your mains answers mains answers how the economy of the china today the way it is flourishing because of its open door policy because of its open door policy way back in late 1970s especially which was focused by deng xiaoping and focused on the four sectors modernizing that is modernization of agriculture modernization of industry modernization of defense and modernization of science and technology and that was all in consultation with the senior leaders that is called as the party's eight elders eight elders and this person is deng xiaoping so i have taken all these images so that it will be stored in your subconscious and then while you are reading it will be very very use, easy for you to understand the how the diplomatic relations or diplomacy has taken place right from choi en loi and then mao zedong and then deng xiaoping xiaoping and then further in regards to yu junto and then uh, zheng xiamen and then again in regards to the xi jinping so we will look at all those and it will be very very useful for you in regards to the conceptual point of view was this uh, pratham says it was this liberalization of china entirely for an investment or a behest of its fiscal so definitely it was for its benefit and for its economy to flourish so definitely fdis as we have gone ahead with a uh, uh, lpg lpg in the 1990s they have gone it in the late 1970s foreign direct investment it's nothing but liberalization privatization and what is a globalization and then we have seen what do you say successive general secretaries of the cpc that is communist party of china success that is yo yo bang and then zhao ziang so this person is 
your your bank and then this leader is Zhao Yan. So they were the both successive general secretaries of the Communist Party of China. And they were they were the Deng's left and right hand. So definitely, as we were talking about the eight elders, as we were talking about the eight elders, wherein Deng Xiaoping has gone ahead with his consultation. And then in the eight elders, the general secretaries were your Yu Yobang and then Zhao Ziyang, were the one who were the left and right hand of Deng Xiaoping. So definitely there was a situation which was making sure that the CP's what was CP's line, or else in regards to the Communist Party of China, they were actually trying to deviate. So both the general secretaries of Deng Xiaoping were, who were left and right hand of Deng Xiaoping were deviating from the CPC's line that is Communist Party of China's line they were deviating so when they were deviating they were packed off please do understand this is what we are also looking at the the, the kind of uh, uh, strategy or the style Deng Xiaoping has also taken up in regards to identifying who were actually deviating from the ideology of Communist Party of China. That is his own left and right hand. That is the General Secretary Hu Yobang and then Zhao Ziyong. When they were deviating from the CP's line, they were packed off. Please do understand this. They were packed off ignominiously. That is humiliating and degrading by the party leaders led by Deng. So they were removed or they were humiliated and they, they were degraded when they were deviating from the CPEC that is Communist Party of China's ideology when they were living or when they were deviating. So Deng Xiaoping has packed them off or they have, he has humiliated and then degraded them from the party leaders led by Deng Xiaoping. So definitely we are also making it very clear that this is what is uh, the, the style of Deng Xiaoping from 1990s until his death that is up to 1997. So we have seen before Deng Xiaoping that is Mao Zedong and after Mao Zedong that is Deng Xiaoping up till 1997 before he has passed away. His title of the, that of the honorary chairman of the Bridge Association of China. So definitely he was not head of the state, he was not head of the government but he was the honorary chairman of the Bridge Association of China. So he was the only the chairman or, or else the honorary chairman of the Bridge Association of China until his death in, till 1997. He was neither the head of the state, neither the head of the government, but he was so powerful. Yet he remained unquestioned leader. That is what Mao Zedong was the undisputed leader. Mao Zedong was the undisputed leader. And Deng Xiaoping is an unquestioned leader. Please understand. Undisputed leader was Mao Zedong. And then unquestioned, unquestioned leader was Deng Xiaoping. So look at it. Wielding great power even his dotage long after his successor Jiang Zemin. So after what you say we have seen Zhao Henloi. After that, Mao Zedong, after that, Deng Xiaoping, Xiaoping, and after that, Jiang Zemin. So, Jiang Zemin was the next who has assumed the top post after the unquestioned leader passed away in the year 1997. And before I go ahead with the next uh, slide. Okay, Satya says that... Uh, Deng Xiaoping focused on strategies to develop China where Xi uh, sibling is focusing or Xi Jinping is focusing on tactics. Okay, very well. Yes, obviously. Uh, Satya says, was this liberalization of China entirely uh, behest of his fiscal? Uh, yes, I did answer. And then Srihari says, sir, is the eight elders can able to influence the decision of PRC during that time? Yes, yes, definitely. But that is what, what we have the cabinet... Uh, Cabinet ministers or union and ca union and cabinet ministers take the decision. The same way, eight elders were taken uh, into consideration. Whatever decisions they would be taken up by the PRC, 
definitely it would be in consultation with the eight elders and the decision would be final the way we have it in india i mean just comparison i'm not uh, what do you say totally uh, it is equivalent and just uh, for the betterment of the explanation for you to understand i'm just comparing it with the uh, cabinet committee or the way we have the uh, cabinet in india i think you understood and pratham says very well explained by you the chinese ship of diplomacy from 1930s okay well, thank you very much pratham and Satya says about question. Yes, I did. Uh, Satya. Deng Xiaoping focused on strategies to develop China, whereas Xi Jinping is focusing on tactics. Yes, see, definitely uh, the diplomacy will not be the same and cannot be the same because diplomacy uh, of any country is dynamic. Depends upon the national interest, depend on, depending upon the situation, depending upon the, uh, the wants of the people depending upon the ideology how it the, the particular party which is in power its ideology and it and the people's requirement it keeps on changing definitely then it was in regards to the uh, strategies to develop china and now because of Xi Jinping is focusing on tactics absolutely satya and then home uh, pratham says basically it is the cpc ideology of communism which governs their policy and executive cooperation of this of the cpc not a person it's the ideology which wields the power highly influential by nature definitely definitely very well said uh, pratham it is the cpc it is the cpc communist party of china is the one which actually that is why that is why deng Xiao, uh, deng Xiaoping also when the general secretaries that is the left and right hand of the deng Xiaoping, they were perceived as deviating from the cpc's line that is what is very important so they, when they were deviating from the ideology of communist party of china they were packed off ignominiously. That is humiliating and degrading. They have been thrown out. So definitely it is. And then now we will focus the spotlight on Xi Jinping. The history of CPC suggests that Xi Jinping wields less power. So we have looked at the architects. We have looked at the architects of CPC. Iconic architects. We have looked at the iconic architects of PRC. That is people's republic of china and then later on the uh, cpc they are the iconic architects of prc and then the communist party of china when we look at uh, the uh, um, mao zedong or joy and loy or in regards to deng xiaoping and then again further in regards to the making sure that jiang zemin also if you look at the power what the mr z is holding is far less power than Mao and then Deng. So definitely Zedong and Xiaoping had a superpower. As, as I said, one was Mao Zedong was undis undisputed leader, and then Xiaoping was unquestioned leader. Unquestioned leader. So definitely undisputed leader and unquestioned leader. If you look at it, comparing it with the Xi Jinping, is far less what you say powerful, less powerful than both of them. Um, perhaps it evokes more fear and respect on the account of ruthless anti-graft campaign. So it is not that he is what you said more powerful, but there is fear. There is fear than respect. Please do understand. There is fear than respect towards Xi Jinping. There is fear than respect by the various people or the various heads of the people that the way the Mao and then uh, Xi Jinping had had then. Till 19, 1997 or before, what you said, uh, uh, before even before Jiang Zemin also. If you look at people fear or the political parties or political leaders fear rather than respecting the Jinping. Because of his anti-graft campaign that has brought down even high ranking. That is, he has gone ahead with the uh, generals of PLA and then polit Politburo members also, he has put them under anti-graft. So this is what is being taken up and that is the fear what is actually erupting in the generals and also Politburo members. That is in regards to the military and also in regards to the political leaders also. They are fearing rather than respecting. So they fear but they do not respect Xi Jinping because of his ruthless anti-graft campaign against the PLA. That is People's Liberation Army generals and also the Politburo members. We will look at he has gone ahead with the ruthless anti graft and that is what is making him less powerful than Mao and then Deng. 
in the consensus driven system of cpc developed by the cultural revolution it was uncommon to target the gopher gophers in the sense the messages or assistance of rivals but top party pla leaders were generally considered inviolable that is unchangeable and unaltered to avoid retribution fortune change so definitely we are seeing the kind of cultural revolution what is taking place in the uh, communist party of china that is because of the consensus consensus driven system which was actually taken up by the mao and then deng but now if you look at that is not happening but that is a kind of what you say now it is going ahead with a a uh, ruthless anti graft campaign against the one who talks uh, against ji jinping the one he has also taken the uh, action against the high ranking pla generals and also politburo members and in contrast if you look at ji has put behind bars tigers that is as i have discussed pla general that is kai hu and then box young also see the generals were put behind the bars so definitely it is a kind of what you say anti graft campaign which is been taken up by z that is why there is a fear but not respect but not respects so that is the major difference between the consultation and then the anti graft campaign between z and others and there are definitely a disgruntled forces might challenge Mr Z's leadership in the near future as we have seen the kind of situation what has arrived the post covid 19 situation the way he has handled this situation is also raising the concerns that there are many disgruntled forces which might challenge Xi Jinping leadership itself no doubt the chinese economy has kick started or it, it is what do you say heading towards a very uh, fine position but looking into the covid 19 situation the kind of trust deficit the kind of trust deficit and trade deficit what china is having or china is facing now because of the or else the consequences of covid 19 situation it could be an economic hardship which could spark of public dissent and harsher security measures by various countries by various countries across the globe towards china towards china and that will cause a economic hardship even though chinese economy has what do you say had a, what do you say a kick start or a head start but because of the covid 19 situation the kind of trust and trade deficit china is now holding will have a kind of uh, a trade and trust deficit by various countries across the globe towards china and then the trade and trust deficit might increase further and then the economic hardship might spark off please you understand this economic hardship might or could spark off what public dissent please you understand you you might get a doubt that how there could be a challenge to xi jinping's leadership because of the trade and trust deficit because of the trade and trust deficit what china is now experiencing across the globe there could be a possibility that various countries would uh, go against china and because of that there could be an economic hardship because of that there could be an economic hardship because of the economic hardship there could be a spark of that is the public dissent and harsher security measures would be taken up over the public and that would create a or that would pose a challenge to the xi jinping's leadership and pratham says that in act <coughs> in actual communism is in the way for a hyper nationalism in practice <coughs> with complete control dev uh, devotion or devolution and bias towards the communist ideology is in a way a form of hyper nationalism so that is what happens once the communism hyper nationals and definitely there will be a spark wherein they would uh, start uh, talking about uh, the individuals rights or else civil liberties or else civil rights and that will slowly create or that will slowly shift the communi communism or communist to socialism and further to democracy i think you are getting the point you never know the communist ideology might slowly gradually evade evade madhu says z is trying to show hegemony over chinese and worldwide yes absolutely 
yes absolutely and moreover we have seen the military confrontation with the united states leading a loss of faith so definitely not only the way we are we, ha, we have discussed or i have made a point in regards to the trade and trust deficit not only the trade and trust de, trust deficit but also in regards to the military confrontation so the, there is a military confrontation which is time and again happening uh, from china towards the united states and that is leading towards a loss of faith and this is a risk to zeek and ill afford so definitely along with the trade and trust deficit as we are uh, we have discussed the third one is the military confrontation also might create a kind of loss of face against china and that might create again problem within the china itself and then indignation could lead to chinese people what do you mean by indignation that is anger and resentment because of these three reasons there could be an anger and resentment by the chinese people which have been nurtured on habri sabri in the sense pride or arrogance so they will quickly direct their ire that is anger against the leader and abund as they have uh, what do you say experience of the china cpc or prc has experience that they have abundant even deng xiaoping's advice that is as the xi jinping is also is going against the the mao or even in regards to deng is going against it so when he is going against it that is against the uh, the, the 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 leadership style or the what style it is that is hide our capacities and bide our time so what they have gone ahead that is mao mao and then deng have gone ahead with the concept that is hide our capacities and and bide our time so definitely this tagline has been missing which was eminent during the mao and deng is missing by the xi jinping and this is what will create a what do you say threat or challenge to the leader leadership of xi jinping that is indignation that is anger and resentment led by the chinese people nurtured on habri that is the pride or arrogance to quickly direct the ire against what deng has gone ahead with a concept or he has followed the tagline that is hide our capacity and bide our time is going against it that is the trust deficit trade deficit military confrontation with us all this is against the concept of hide our capacities and bide our time but is definitely not hiding the capacities and is going against the time he is going against the tide that will cause a real challenge to xi jinping in the near future having steered a constitutional revision so definitely we have seen there was a constitutional revision or amendment which has taken place in china in 2008 and this constitutional amendment has given the permission to uh, the president not uh, to him in the sense to the president of china that they can go ahead with contesting beyond two terms beyond two terms so earlier it was the limit was two terms but in the year 2018 there was a constitutional amendment that is the the president of china can go ahead with contesting beyond two terms and no doubt z would preside because of this constitutional amendment or revision in early 2018 now we will preside over the centenary celebration that is 100 years that is 100 years celebration of cpc he will preside over which is supposed to take place in the year 2021 that is next year so he will preside over the 100 years or the centenary celebration of the communist party of china which would be taking which would take up which would form or fall in 2021 and 100th anniversary of the pla of people's liberation army which will fall in 2027 so definitely the constitutional amendment has been done uh, keeping in view that he would be as equivalent as undisputed leader and unquestioned leader of same as mao zedong and then Deng Xiaoping, even Xi Jinping, also would be a great leader. That he would preside over the centenary uh, celebrations of CPC in the year 2021. Again, from Prelim's point of view, you can take it into consideration. And then, in regards to the hundredth or centenary or hundredth anniversary of the PLA, PLA of again in regards to the in the year 27 2027 so this could be again very important for prelims point of view so this is 
the way the Xi Jinping has gone ahead with uh, making sure that there is amendments to the ex existing uh, Communist Party of China so that he can go ahead with presiding over the centenary celebration of CPC in 2021 and 100th, years, 100th anniversary of PLA in 2027. But definitely there is a kind of situation which would prevail or which would uh, question or challenge the leadership style of Xi Jinping. A wide over time means so definitely wide over time means in the sense like you need to get adjusted you should not always go ahead with kind of uh, saying that yes the time is mine so definitely you have to wait for the time you have to what do you say take it into consideration that the situations if the if it, just, if it is not favoring to us we need to uh, slight make sure that we are getting down the situation or else we are trying to give others a chance wherein if you look at Mao and then Zedong also they have gone ahead with these two concepts that is biding our time that is trying to make sure that when the situation is not favoring us so we will keep quiet when the situation is not favoring us we will keep, keep quiet or we will have a lower key affair lower key affair the way the Mao Zedong and then Deng Xiaoping have also done in regards to the uh, having their international arena or their international prominence they have made sure that whenever the situation is not favoring them they have lowered themselves or maintained a lower key profile lower profile they have maintained i think satya you have got the point ah srihari you have got the point will the behavior of Xi Jinping with the pla rise internal aggression or disputes in china that is what we would wait and see that there would be a challenge whether we are not sure whether there were an internal aggression dispute or there would be one more Tiananmen Square uh, revolt but there would be certainly as per the author there would be a uh, challenge to the leadership of Xi Jinping I think Satya you have got the point and then uh, Pratham says power and communism not healthy combination since time and again more power has brought out more negatives of communism that is what there could be a possibility that is what i'm saying there could be a possibility that from the shift gradual shift from communism to socialism to democracy and now we will look at the troubled areas what are the troubled areas which are making that china uh, that there could be not the way the situation was during mao and deng xiaoping then when we look at the run-up of the pls centenary harbors when we look at the pls 100 years so definitely potential for instability and conflict is arising because of china's above the goal of reunification of taiwan so definitely they wanted to go ahead with the reunification of taiwan so taiwan is the one which is the uh, a troubled uh, area or which is causing a concern to china itself and any force of any any use of force by china will drag usa into the entire situation so definitely if china is trying to reunify if china is trying to reunify taiwan so and if china is going ahead with using of force so definitely us will come into the entire system entire the the way it will go ahead with making sure that it will have a concept of uh, there would be a kind of situation of warlike situation because a view supported by the recent passage of there was an act which was passed in the US. There was an act which was passed in the US called as Taipei Act. So what is this Taipei Act? Again, for prelims point of view, this is very important from the prelims point of view. So there was a Taipei Act which was uh, passed in the US and that is called as Taiwan Allies International Protection and Enhancement Initiative. Taiwan Allies International Protection and Enhancement Initiative Act by US and this will go ahead with strengthening Taiwan's de facto independence. So definitely this is a cause of concern that China if it goes ahead with reunification of Taiwan and then contrary to tradition Z has anointed, anointed in the sense rubbed successor. So definitely Z is going ahead that is why he has gone ahead with the amendment to the constitution, constitution itself, constitution of Communist uh, People's Republic of China, Constitution to the People's Republic of China itself, he has gone at 
and this assumes a mantle against the 20th CPC Congress in 2022 or he will thwart or prevent the sixth generation leadership. So that is what the sixth generation leadership will emerge and that will create a definitely a threat to the leadership of leadership of China. Is there also there is no strong social system to support the communist style of power control due to recent phenomenon of global village. Yes, definitely see that is what I am saying now. That is the sixth generation leadership will emerge which will thwart or which will stop or prevent the the, the, the kind of sway the Xi Jinping has gone ahead with uh, amending the constitution of PRC. And the only leaders after Deng have an extended stint was Jiang Zemin who was a secretary, general secretary from 1989 to 2002 and the president from 1992 to 2003 and the chairman of the CPC that is the Central Military Commission that is from 1989 to 2004. So definitely after Deng, the one who was more powerful or as equal to Zeng that is unquestioned leader was Jiang Zemin and this person is the Jiang Zemin. And then after that who has actually had more of power or else the one who has passed or who has taken over the baton from Jiang Zemin was Hyo Jinto. Who was Jinto who was the general secretary of the CPC and the president of PRC. So this person is Hyo Jinto. Hyo Jinto was uh, just before just before Xi Jinping. The Hyo Jinto and prior to that it was Jiang, Jiang Zemin. So Jiang Zemin and then Hyo Jinto and Xi Jinping, we can see the, what do you say, the, the timeline, the presence of the PRC. And now we, he, he has also survived the losing his grip. We have seen that because he did not ride roughshod. So uh, Hyo Jinto has really not, what do you say, uh, gone ahead with Deng Xiaoming or Jiang Zemin, but he has uh, definitely uh, not been able to ride with the rough side, not able to ride with the rough side. But, and in the process what has happened is, Mi Xi Jinping has gone ahead with riding as a tiger and he has taken over the, from Hyo Jinto and then now he is the, the president of the China, that is PRC. And we have seen that a, a report has been uh, come up that is from the China Institute of Contemporary International Relations. There is a report from the which has been leaked from the China's Institute of Contemporary International Relations think tank which says that or which warns the Chinese top leadership which is warning the Chinese top leadership that there would be a rising tide of there would be a rising tide of anti-China sentiments. Please do understand. So this is a, a report which has been leaked by the which has been reported by the China's China Institutes of Contemporary International Relations CICIR CICIR and this says that or it is warning the top leadership China's top leadership of a rising tide so definitely there would be a as per CICIR there would be a revolt or revolution of anti-China sentiments why because of the backdrop on the backdrop of COVID-19 pandemic outbreak and we can compare this kind of what you say anti-China sentiment or rising tide which has happened in Tiananmen Square incident. Tiananmen Square incident we have seen it in 1989 June 1989. So there is a report that there would be a revolt or a rising tide of anti-China sentiment because or or the backdrop of the COVID-19 uh, COVID-19 pandemic situation, which would be as equivalent to the to the revolt of Tiananmen Square, which has taken place in June 1989. So almost after 31, 32 years, the TICII is predicting a rising tide or an anti-China sentiment, which would take up the hope that can economically rich and prosperous china as definitely economically china is rich and prosperous would gradually become liberal and democratic please do understand what i was repeatedly saying communism to socialism to liberal or to democratic 
because of the anti china sentiment you never know what is behind the tide which is rising you never know which, who are there or what is behind the rising tide and behind the rising tide what cici i is making or it is projecting or it is warning is an anti china sentiment because of the covid 19 outbreak and that even though china is economically rich and prosperous it would gradually become liberal and then democratic so please do understand we my session is making you clear about the entire internal politics or else the the, the way the shift of ideology in prs or cpc communist or prs people's republic of china prc itself in china itself how the ideology might shift and then it's not that ideology will be forever or else the same ideology party will be ruling the country forever no if you look at this china we can make it very clear that there would be a rising tide which would shift its communism towards socialism socialism towards liberalism liberalism or liberal or liberalism to democracy or democracy democratic whether the current us pressure on china for its controversial policies towards xinjiang or tibet or hong kong or taiwan so definitely there are anti china sentiments as we were talking about we have seen against the xinjiang province against the tibet autonomous region now and then in regards to hong kong what we have seen recently the new security law or national security law in regards to hong kong and also again in regards to the taiwan so definitely all this which will be put pressure by the us on to the china will induce change remains to be seen that means the changes or inducement of the changes remains to be seen or obvious and now the face of continues and demands for accountability so definitely the anti china sentiments will want the accountability it will want the accountability for the outbreak or mounting testing of z leadership leaders z leadership z jinping's leadership accountability it would be demanding for the accountability and that is anti china sentiment so before i get into the uh, next priyari pillar says uh, sir why campaigning with riding a tiger okay here he survived after losing his grip grip in the sense whom you are talking about we are talking about the tio jintoi tio jintoi so he has uh, loosened survived after losing his grip on power perhaps because he did not ride rough side over other influential power centers by comparison mr z is riding a tiger <laughs> what do you mean by riding a tiger you are always safe uh, sriyari you are always safe when you are riding a tiger once you get down or once you are off from the tiger your life is a threat your life is a threat i think sriyari espila you are getting the point what is at the political side of it you are always safe when you are riding a tiger that is what is by comparison mr z is riding a tiger if you are once you are off the tiger that is your 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 you have got down out of the tiger so what is the risk the tiger itself might pounce on you so the one which is on will be a challenge will be a threat to himself that is what is called as the riding a tiger he or anyone will be safe while riding a tiger once the person is off the off of the tiger so definitely the tiger itself will pounce back and that is what the problem is now and uh, pratham says to end the age money is nearly impossible but it is always difficult to stop such revolution as world borders uh, borders are fading away and a global citizen would be champion in future yes very well said what is the tiananmen incident so it is a revolt it is a revolt by the students also even it has been taken up uh, before uh, earlier also when china was humiliated in the Uh, paris uh, peace paris peace deal so there is it is a revolt revolts it's famous for tiananmen square it's called as tiananmen square wherein any revolt will be taken up there 
mostly by the students anti china whenever there are anti china it will take place and pratham says all the future wars will not be of gunpowder but of chips processor and importantly data yes sri hari says yes sir when he loses his power his life becomes in threat yes so conclusion is the alienation of china of a sizable section alienation alienation by china of a sizable section of the international community so there is alienation that means china has been alienated or been sidetracked by a section sizable section of international community and public 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 in the sense we are talking about the public we are talking about the the, the public of china itself criticism of mr z zingping including the chinese social media so social media along with social media the public of china or prc suggest that the sun may have reached its zenith that is at the top so once you are top <laughs> what will happen once you have reached the top position what is bound to happen the natural law that you have to come down you will definitely reach the zenith or the apex or the top position but after that it is very difficult how much time you will sustain there and then it will come and the question here is and the question yeah june 4th and the question here is for you all uh, please do write a uh, answer for this the alienation of china it looks similar but i have done a minor difference uh, 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 editing here the alienation of china of a sizable section of the international community and public criticism of z suggests that z here you can take post here you can add post covid 19 pandemic post covid 19 pandemic the alienation of china of a sizable section of the international community and public criticism as to of mr z zingping post post please add here please add here post covid 19 pandemic suggests that suggests that sun may have raised its zenith discuss so this is a question if we can try to answer this i bet that you are all i mean i i i, I bet uh, in favor of you <laughs> in favor of you that you are all well equipped in regards to the entire the political system itself of china right from 1940s or 49s right from 1940s itself if you look at you will have a uh, or else even 1930s itself mid 1930s itself uh, zedong has gone ahead with uh, uh, a revolution i mean he has gone ahead with uh, consolidating the revolution or uh, founding or uh, get uh, making sure that he is the founding member of the prc itself prc so we will understand the entire political system of prc itself if you can write this answer anyone who is what do you say opting for political science in international relations or else or else if not also in the gs paper 2 in the gs paper 2 that is international relations you will be very much equipped and if a question is because there could be a possibility a question being asked on the covid 19 this so gs paper 2 ir international relations international relations there could be a possibility a question asked that the alienation of china of a sizable section of the international community and public criticism of the, of mr z zingping post covid 19 pandemic suggests that the sun may have reached its zenith discuss so i think you have a very good uh, question wherein you can write at ease because you also i think many of you have been part of my explanation which i have taken almost a fortnight 
wherein I have spoken at length of, about the diplomacy of Mao and then Zhao Enlai, Mao and then Deng Xiaoping. So you can uh, also uh, look at that, uh, you can also follow that uh, session and then this together, combined together, you can write an answer. And then uh, before I wind up, uh, Pratham said basically framing out from our entire discussion would be our answer. Yes, absolutely. Satya says, firstly, Z should focus on its internal anti-China emotions since it is not respect, it is fear. Yes, yes, yes. It may anytime turn into aggression. That is why we were talking about, that is why we were talking about uh, the Tiananmen Square future. Eman says, requesting you to upload PDF of this <laughs> analysis daily for those who are not enrolled in this plus subscription. See, uh, Eman, I'm extremely sorry because as per the norms, as per the norms of an academy, you will not get the PDF when you are uh, going ahead with the watching the uh, videos or my sessions or my explanations in the YouTube. But if you are part of the an academy special classes, you can have the access. So get, try to get there. An academy special classes. Get into the place classes. You will definitely have it. Emant, I think you have understood. So uh, I would uh, definitely thank you all, and then uh, I would say all the best for your preparation. All the best for your preparation. And then I would thank Hemant, Srihari, Madhu, Satya, Siddhartan, Asit. Pratham, Srihari, um, everyone, uh, I thank you and then all the best for your exam and uh, before you uh, sign off or log off the YouTube, do like the uh, video, share the video and then subscribe the Let's crack UPSC CAC English. Subscribe the Let's Crack UPSC CAC English channel and then subscribe it for 24 months using my code SBT10 that is Sandeep Bhushan Summala10 wherein you can avail 10% discount on the original price which is 48,000 but you will get 10% discount while you are using my code SBT10 Sandeep Bhushan Summala and the discounted price would be 43,200 and this you will be actually paying for the uh, entire 20, 13 months amount you will be paying but you will get the entire 24 month subscription and if you haven't downloaded the Unacademy Learners app please go ahead with downloading the Unacademy Learners app and then make sure that you are part of the Unacademy special classes wherein you can have the access to the, all the courses from all the educators so this what I was talking about uh, a month a month and uh, uh, have access to even the let's uh, uh, in regards to the an academy has come up with UPSC CS English in 10 minutes and the telegram link for uh, let's crack UPSC CS English is let's crack UPSC CS English and then do not forget to use my code that is SBT10 while you are subscribing for 24 months Sandeep Bhushan Tumala SBT10 that is uh, you will get 10% discount and then I would say thank you and all the best and this is my telegram link t.me slash sandibhushan sbt I repeat you can connect it you can connect to uh, me by the telegram link that is t.me slash sandibhushan sbt and you can also what you say uh, any questions you can also try to raise it in my uh, whatsapp number through my whatsapp number that is 9292003311 wherein any doubts can be posed there and i definitely make sure that i will answer to the questions or queries once again no no problem Hemant. you can go ahead you can you can still subscribe for what you say you can download the app you can download the app that is uh, uh, an academy learners app and you can be part of the an academy special classes also you can do this. This is just what you say. You need not pay anything. You can download the An Academy app and then you can be part of An Academy special classes. Hey man, for you. And then uh, thank you very much and uh, all the best. See you tomorrow again at 7:30. See you tomorrow at 7:30 a.m. again in regards to the analysis of the Hindu newspaper. And then get connected with my uh, Telegram link. E.me/sandeepbushan.sbt.
whatsapp number is uh, for any queries i will certainly clear your doubts if any you can whatsapp uh, message me to my whatsapp number 9292003311 thank you thank you very much see you at 7:30 morning tomorrow